Hello, my name is Vyoma Chha, and this is the module on Financial Mechanisms and Technology Transfer. Before we begin, I must remind you that this module acts as a supplement to the module on climate change. If you have covered the module on climate change already, you will be aware of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, or the UNFCCC. This module specifically looks at the provisions for financial support and technology transfer under the UNFCCC. Moving forward, we try and understand what these provisions are. In keeping with the objectives of the Common but Differentiated Responsibilities principle, Article 4 of the UNFCCC lays down the general commitments parties need to make in order to address the issue of climate change. One of the major developed country party commitments is to provide financial support, including the transfer of technology, to help support climate change activities in developing countries. Both the UNFCCC and the Kyoto Protocol contain provisions that ensure that developed country parties support and enable actions on climate change by developing countries through the provision of financial resources or through the transfer of technology. To this effect, the main learning outcome of this module is to understand the several arrangements for finance and technology transfer under the UNFCCC. Finance under the UNFCCC is captured under Article 4.3 of the Convention, where the onus is on the developed country parties to provide financial support to developing countries. In particular, such financial support should provide new and additional financial resources to meet the agreed full costs incurred by developing country parties. In addition, there must be the transfer of technology to these developing country parties. Moreover, there is a need to ensure the adequacy and predictability in the flow of these funds and the importance of appropriate burden sharing amongst the developed country parties. Article 4.3 of the Convention is significant because any developing country action on climate change is made conditional on the effective implementation of the developed country party's commitment on financial support and technology transfer. Specifically, if we look at Article 4.7 of the Convention, the extent to which developing country parties will effectively implement their commitments will depend on the effective implementation by the developed country parties of their commitments related to financial resources and transfer of technology. We now try and look at the different channels of finance under the UNFCCC. Broadly, they are the financial mechanism of the UNFCCC, the adaptation fund, and the fast at finance period. The financial mechanism of the UNFCCC comprises of two operating entities, the Global Environment Facility, or the GEF, and the Green Climate Fund, or the GCF. We now turn to understanding more about the financial mechanism of the UNFCCC. This is the major arrangement for finance under the Convention and is captured under Article 11 of the text of the UNFCCC. The purpose of the financial mechanism is to ensure the provision of financial resources to developing country parties in support of their implementation of the Convention. Article 11.1 defines a mechanism for the provision of financial resources on a grant or concessional basis, including for the transfer of technology. Developed country parties may also provide financial resources related to the implementation of the convention through other bilateral, regional, or multilateral channels. The operating entities under this financial mechanism are supposed to function under the guidance of and be accountable to the Conference of Parties, or the COP. The COP shall decide on its policies, program priorities, and eligibility criteria related to the implementation of the Convention. Currently, as I mentioned earlier, there are two operating entities of the financial mechanism, the Global Environment Facility, the GEF, or the GEF, and the Green Climate Fund, 
which is the GCF. Both these operating entities of the financial mechanism report annually to the COP, on the basis of which the COP provides guidance to the operating entities, including on matters related to policies, program priorities, and eligibility criteria. The COP further reviews each financial mechanism every four years. The Global Environment Facility is an operating entity of the financial mechanism which operates independently in order to finance climate change activities. The GEF Council is the main governing body and it is a 32 member council that meets twice a year. The GEF Council reports to the COP annually and the COP in turn provides further guidance to the GEF on policies, program priorities and eligibility criteria. Established in October 1991, the GEF was a 1 billion US dollar pilot program in the World Bank to assist the protection of the global environment and promote e environmental sustainable development. It has since then provided 12.5 billion US dollars in grants and leveraged an additional 58 billion US dollars in co-financing to support activities related to biodiversity, climate change, international waters, land degradation, and chemicals and waste in the context of development projects and programs. The United Nations Development Program, or the UNDP, the United Nations Environment Program, or the UNEP, and the World Bank were the three initial partners implementing GEF projects. However, since a restructuring in 1994, the GEF has moved out of the World Bank and is a permanent independent institution. The World Bank continues to serve as the trustee of the GEF Trust Fund and provides administrative services. The GEF also functions as the financial mechanism for other environmental conventions, such as the United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity, or the CBD, the Stockholm Convention on Persistent Organic Pollutants, the UN Convention to Combat Desertification, to name a few. The Global Environment Facility, or the GEF, also administers two other funds established by the Conference of Parties under the UNFCCC framework. These two funds are the Least Developed Countries Fund or the LDCF and the Special Climate Change Fund, the SCCF. Both the LDCF and the SCCF are operated by the GEF under the guidance of the COP. The GEF Council meets twice a year as the Council for the LDCF which is chaired by the Chief Executive Officer of the GEF and the Chair of the GEF Council. Similarly, the GEF Council meets twice a year as the Council of the SCCF as well, which is also chaired by the CEO of the GEF and the Chair of the GEF Council. The Least Developed Countries Fund was established in 2002 and aims to address the needs of the least developed countries, whose economic and geophysical characteristics make them especially vulnerable to the impact of global warming and climate change. It supports a work program to assist the LDCs to carry out preparation and implementation of their National Adaptation Programs of Action, or NAPAs. The NAPAs were aimed to identify priority activities that address the urgent and immediate climate change adaptation needs of least developed countries. And the LDCF is the only fund mandated to finance NAPAs and has managed to mobilize resources to ensure the, effect the effective implementation of other elements of the least developed country work program. The Special Climate Change Fund was established in 2001 with the aim of supporting adaptation and technology transfer in all developing country parties to the UNFCCC. It provides finance to projects on adaptation, technology transfer, capacity building, energy, transport, industry, waste management, and forestry. It has two active funding windows, the SCCFA for adaptation and the SCCFB for technology transfer. To date, 
about 333 million US dollars have been pledged to the SCCF of which about 299 million US dollars have been disbursed and paid. The Green Climate Fund In 2010, at the 16th session of the COP in Cancun in Mexico, parties decided to establish the Green Climate Fund as an operating entity of the financial mechanism of the UNFCCC. This is the second operating entity of the financial mechanism of the UNFCCC under Article 11. The main objective of the GCF is to make a significant and ambitious contribution to the global efforts towards attaining the goals set by the international community to combat climate change. The GCF aims to promote the paradigm shift towards low carbon and climate resilient development pathways by providing support to developing countries to limit or reduce their greenhouse gas emissions and to adapt to the impacts of climate change, taking into the account the needs of those developing countries who are especially vulnerable to the adverse effects of climate change. The GCF, although, is still in the process of being fully operational and disbursing money. It's currently governed by a 24-member board, with the World Bank serving as the interim trustee of the fund which is subject to review three years after the operationalization of the fund. In 2011, at the 17th session of the COP in Durban, parties approved the governing instrument of the GCF. The following year, at the 18th session of the COP in Doha, parties endorsed the decision of the GCF board to select Songdo in Republic of Korea as the host of the GCF. At the 19th session of the COP, parties further agreed on arrangements between the COP and the GCF to ensure that the GCF is accountable to and functions under the guidance of the COP to support projects, programs, policies and other activities in developing country parties using thematic funding windows. There were further developments for the Green Climate Fund at the 19th session of the COP in Warsaw. This meeting also stressed on the need to achieve full operationalization of the GCF by 2015 and urged the board of the GCF to finalize the essential requirements to receive, manage, program and disburse financial resources so that the GCF can commence its initial resource mobilization process as soon, and, as, soon as possible and transition subsequently into a formal replenishment process. In May 2014, the GCF board agreed on eight essential requirements for the GCF to move towards commencing its initial resource mobilization. Amongst the essential requirements were the results management framework, the initial proposal approval process, the guiding framework and procedures for accrediting entities to the GCF, and the GCF's financial risk management and investment frameworks. Since then, in June 2014, at the meeting of the international negotiators in Bonn, there were calls for a 15 billion US dollar capitalization of the Green Climate Fund by the end of 2014. As of July 2014, Korea has pledged more money about 40 million US dollars to the GCF than any other developed country in the world. However, this changed later in July 2014 when Germany pledged about 1 billion US dollars to the Green Climate Fund. Other developed countries are likely to announce pledges to the Green Climate Fund by the end of 2014 in order to ensure that the GCF could move towards full operationalization as well as disbursement of funds by early 2015. The second major channel of finance under the UNFCCC is the Adaptation Fund. The Adaptation Fund is a special fund established in 2001 under the UNFCCC to finance concrete adaptation projects and programs in developing country parties to the Kyoto Protocol that are particularly vulnerable to the adverse effects of climate change. 
The funding for the adaptation fund is through a share of proceeds from the clean development mechanism projects and other sources including voluntary contributions. The share of proceeds amounts to 2% of the certified emission reductions issued for a CDM project activity. The adaptation fund in turn is supervised and managed by a 16 member adaptation fund board. The third major channel for finance under the UNFCCC has been the fast start finance period. In 2009, during the 15th session of the COP in Copenhagen, the developed countries pledged to provide 30 billion US dollars in new and additional resources, including forestry and investments for the period 2010 to 2012 with balanced allocation between mitigation and adaptation. This commitment period came to be known as what is called the fast start finance period. As of November 2013, developed countries report that they mobilized 35 billion US dollars for climate change in developing countries from 2010 to 2012 exceeding their target of 30 billion US dollars. So far, there have been 37 contributing countries with the five largest contributions coming from Japan, the United States of America, the United Kingdom, Norway, and Germany. Having taken a look at the financial mechanisms under the UNFCCC, we now take a look at how the convention has addressed issues of technology transfer. Combating climate change impacts requires the large-scale diffusion of green technologies. For this reason, enhancing technology development and transfer has also been a key objective of the convention since its inception. In addition to financial support, developed country parties are required to support the development and enhancement of indigenous capacities and technologies of developing country parties promoting the effective development and transfer of environmentally sound technologies is one of the most crucial steps in enabling developing countries to pursue their objectives for sustainable development in a climate friendly manner article 4.5 of the convention specifically urges developed country parties to facilitate the transfer of technology to developing countries it reads that developed country parties and other developed country parties included in Annex 2 shall take all practicable, practicable steps to promote, facilitate and finance as appropriate the transfer of or access to environmentally sound technologies and know-how to other parties, particularly developing country parties. In 2007, at the 13th session of the COP, held in Bali, parties had requested the Global Environment Facility, or the GEF, to elaborate a strategic program to scale up the level of investment for technology transfer with the aim of helping developing countries address their needs for environmentally sound technologies. At the next COP in 2008, held in Poznan in Poland, parties welcomed the establishment of this program and titled it the Poznan Strategic program on technology transfer. This program, operated by the GEF, provides support for technology needs assessment, technology transfer pilot projects, and disseminating experience of the GEF and successfully demonstrated environmentally sound technologies. Later, in order to enable better transfer of technology and know-how, the COP established a set of arrangements to facilitate technology development and transfer to developing countries. In 2010, at the 16th session of the COP in Cancun, parties established the technology mechanism under the UNFCCC with the main objective of enhancing action on the development and transfer of technology to support action on mitigation and adaptation. This technology mechanism has two components, the Technology Executive Committee or the TEC and the Climate Technology Center and Network, CTCN. We will first take a look at the TEC or the Technology Executive Committee. The TEC is the policy component of the technology mechanism under the UNFCCC. 
It has a series of mandated functions and serves parties by providing recommendations on technology development and transfer issues. The TEC also serves to inform parties and stakeholders by disseminating information via policy briefs, technical papers and a dedicated website and events. In addition, in addition the TEC links with other arrangements such as the CTCN to ensure coherence on technology transfer matters. Finally, it engages with relevant stakeholders outside of the convention to promote coherence and coordination across technology activities. The Climate Technology Center and Network, or the CTCN, is the implementation arm of the technology mechanism. It is accountable to and acts under the guidance of the COP through its advisory board. The CTCN's main role is to respond to developing country parties' requests submitted through their national designated entities. The mission of the CTCN is to stimulate technology cooperation and to enhance technology development and transfer. The CTCN particularly assists developing countries at their request to facilitate the preparation and implementation of technology projects and strategies that support action on climate change. Next, we take a look at some of the legal issues around technology transfer under the climate regime. One of the legal arguments that has been constant with respect to the transfer of technology is that intellectual property rights, or IPRs, prevent the diffusion of climate-friendly technology or environmental-friendly technologies such as wind power, solar power, biofuels, and some hydro innovation. The UNFCCC has witnessed a very polarized discussion on the role of IPRs in the transfer of climate change technologies, particularly since the 13th session of the COP in Bali. Although the 16th session of the COP in Cancun saw the creation of the technology mechanism, no consensus was reached on any reference to IPRs in the final text adopted by the Cancun Conference and even later by the Durban Conference. Even though the development and transfer of green technologies finds continued mention in the climate change regime, IPRs, which are closely related to the issue, are barely mentioned. The 18th session of the COP held in Doha saw the developed world comprising mainly the US, the European Union, Japan, Canada, and New Zealand continuously claim that the climate negotiations were not the right forum to discuss issues about IPRs as it potentially undermines intellectual property rights in the name of sustainable development and climate change. The developing countries, on the other hand, including India, continue to insist on a reference to concerns over IPRs in the climate negotiations without much avail. Most climate-friendly or environmental-friendly technologies are developed countries' innovation, which lends itself to the argument that it is the developed countries who should transfer these technologies and know-how to the developing countries in order to allow them to take climate action. This argument, however, has a twist or a new dimension to it, whereby countries such as India, China, and Brazil are turning into important producers of environmental technologies. Thus, the technology transfer argument can no longer considered to be merely an issue limited to relations between developing and developed countries. On the flip side, transfer of technology to developing countries continues to remain a big priority, since many of these countries are in the process of massive infrastructure development, and without the transfer of these clean, climate-friendly technologies, these countries could be locked into a very high emissions pathway for many years. A crucial issue in relation to technology transfer remains the absorptive and technological capabilities of the recipient developing countries.
as they arise after the intellectual property issue has been solved. Summing up, financial support and technology transfer are the two most important developed country commitments under the UNFCCC. Since the extent to which developing country parties will undertake climate action remains dependent on the effective implementation of these two commitments by the developed countries. This module tries to provide you with an understanding of the different mechanisms and provisions under the UNFCCC and the Kyoto Protocol that encourage financial support and technology transfer from developed to developing countries. We also try to take a look at the discussion on the role of intellectual property rights in the transfer of climate-friendly technologies. However, a much more clear understanding of intellectual property rights could be found on a module dealing specifically with the issue of IPRs. Thank you.